Hey guys, Ivan here, and you are looking at your most likely future Mr. Olympia, the Mr. Olympia 2019 Brandon Curry. He won the Arnold Classic, he beat William Bonek and Roy Winkler, who are also potential Mr. Olympia winners, but we saw what Brandon Curry can do when he is 100% on and after he has made some improvements. And that's the thing about Brandon, he keeps making improvements, huge improvements, year after year. And I'm sure we're gonna see improved version of him at this 2019 Mr. Olympia. Is that going to be enough to win the throne? I think so. I don't think William has the structure for it, I don't think Rolly has the back for it. But yeah, Brandon doesn't have great legs, but he's improving them. And the only guy that has everything, pretty much, perfect combination of fullness and conditioning combined with a very complete musculature. And overall, super impressive physique is Harry Chopin. Harry Chopin, that's right, but what he doesn't have is the height. And compared to these big guys, he will probably look a little bit smaller. And I'm so happy to talk about Brandon right now, because this guy has zero controversy around him. He was never involved in any kind of drama, for as long as I can remember. And I'm so happy because of that, because I'm sick of all the drama, all the controversy, all the girlfriend beaters and so on. Talking about that stuff really makes me uncomfortable, so I'm gonna try to focus on bodybuilding. The person who is representing bodybuilding at this very point, the best, the best way possible is this man right here, Brandon Curry. And I think he has all the tools necessary to win the show. And he would be an amazing representation for bodybuilding. He would be perfect, perfect representative. I'm really looking forward to seeing him win that show, and once he wins it, I'm sure he will stay there for quite some time. I'm sure he will improve afterwards. If he can just get his legs a little bit bigger, I would be super happy with him, because he has very, very aesthetic physique, very full muscle bellies, symmetrical, arm dominant, small waist, very small waist, tight midsection, very well developed and symmetrical abs, every single thing is on there. And uh, yesterday he posted this photo, actually these two photos, and he asked us, would we like to see him train? What body part would we like to see him train? And I commented below, I said legs, of course, why legs? Because his legs are his biggest weakness. I wouldn't care watching him train his back or his arms because he could do anything for them and they will grow because they're genetically supreme. Very, very good genetics for those muscles, but for legs, not so much. And here you can watch this video of him train his legs. And no, of course, I'm not gonna comment and critique his training video because I'm not a bigger expert than him when it comes to training, most certainly. If he didn't know what he was doing, he wouldn't be battling it for the first spot in the world, the best bodybuilder in the world. So apparently he knows what he's doing. And when it comes to his legs, they need to grow, that's for sure, they need to get bigger. But more importantly, I think they need to be more defined. He needs to have deeper details, deeper cuts in the quads and hamstrings as well. And if he does that somehow, his legs are gonna look bigger. And as you can see right here, his range of motion is not super big, he's not going very deep, and that's because he's apparently trying to focus on the upper portion of his quads. I'm not an expert on training, I'm not selling myself for that, but I can tell you that if you want to target the outer part of your quads, you need to go deep all the way in. If you want to target the upper portion of the quads, it's all about the extremes of the range of motion. So that initial, the first part of the movement, let's say first two quarters or two thirds, are when you are targeting the upper portion of your quads. And that's apparently what Brandon is trying to target right here, because he wants those deep details, apparently. And oops, is that a bubble gut? Yeah, <laughs> well, I guess this just proves something that I believed in for a long time, and that's if you are a 300 pound bodybuilder, you will not have small waist like a 12 year old girl. Of course, when your body grows, your waist grows with it. What is important is that you control it on the stage. And that's what Brandon is doing very efficiently. He never lets his gut out. He's always keeping it un under control and uh, you must respect him for that. And uh, that's all, that's all that matters. Those five minutes on the stage, anything else is completely irrelevant. So once again in 2019, Mr. Olympia with Phil Heath out, with Sean Rodden out, with Big Ramy possibly out. And you also have Josh Nartowitz out, uh, Nathan Diash out. Cedric McMillan out, and the thing is, this is just rumors, nobody is sure who will show up and who will not show up, but there is talk, there is talk about these guys not showing up, and uh, most of them will probably not gonna show up. So, 
in all likeliness, Brandon will win. Uh, the only real challenge for him will be, of course, Bonac, Roly, maybe even Dexter, but probably not. And in my opinion, Hadi Chopin. But Hadi will probably be dwarfed by these giants. <laughs> these guys are also not giants, but Hadi is super short, so he's gonna look like a dwarf next to them. So for that reason, he may not win the show, but... I find Hadi's physique probably the most impressive today, because he has supreme conditioning, very deep separations. He knows how to peak perfectly to show that hard, hard, grainy, dense, thick muscle. And for those reasons, I find his physique very impressive. That and also very complete body, very complete musculature. He doesn't really lack anything, but he does have some weaknesses, and they will be exposed by Brandon Curry. And this is all speculating if Hardy actually somehow gets the visa, which is highly unlikely. But at this point, all we can do is imagine them. If it doesn't happen, it's gonna be very sad. But at least for now, we're not sure, so we can think about it. And it's gonna make it exciting, right? But Olympia is not happening in eight weeks. So let's uh, focus on something that is recent, that is happening soon. That is Tampa Pro. And this is Charles Griffin right here. And as you can see, I would just name this picture all that is wrong with bodybuilding. I mean, there are many videos and many photos with that caption, and this one is representing it perfectly. And you guys can like his back as much as you want. You can like his freakiness as well. You can like his personality. I don't care. This needs to be called out. This kind of stomach and this kind of physics. I do believe that 60s, 70s, 80s, those golden era years were just a stepping stone in evolution of bodybuilding. And I like those classic years. I, I love the golden era. It is special for that era, but bodybuilding eventually outgrew that and became something better. I like it what it is today. But I don't like these kind of physiques. This is where it goes wrong, you know. It just so happens that some people have the potential to get big and keep looking somewhat aesthetic, but some people are just not meant for it, like this guy right here. He should not be a size freak, not with this kind of blown up stomach. And with this kind of ab gap, I mean, yeah, Ronnie had the same thing, but Ronnie's abs were symmetrical. This guy has just ab muscles thrown around in a horrible order. It's just so asymmetrical and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I would prefer much more aesthetic physiques, but with a lot of mass. Some bodybuilders were able to connect those two, but not this guy. This guy is just not looking the way he should, the way bodybuilders should look. And with his small legs as well, he doesn't create a good, not just wheat taper, but an X taper as well. There is basically nothing impressive about his physique. Yeah, there is a lot of muscle and the conditioning is there, but aside from that, just a huge mess. A huge mess. I mean, yeah, maybe I should shut up and uh, respect this guy's hard work that he was putting in. And I'm sure he did that. And uh, I love his back poses and so on. But when I see something like this, and he was very bold to post his on his Instagram, when I see something like this, I need to speak about it. I need to speak my mind. And if you guys don't agree with me, it's okay. You don't have to agree with everything I say. I just say what I think and some people like what I say, some people don't, and I'm okay with that. Now, while we're talking about classic lines and what is wrong with bodybuilding, this is what is right with bodybuilding, classic physique. Very refreshing division. I love that they came up with it. I was personally always dreaming of stepping on Mr. Olympia stage one day, but as the time went on, I realized that I don't have the potential to be one of those mass freaks. I don't have the genetics. But when Mr. Olympia announced 2016 they will actually have classic physique Mr. Olympia, I realized, okay, so this is something that I can look forward to. And this is also far away. This is a, a long way uh, ahead of me. I'm going to have to work hard to achieve something like this. But it is realistic. It's going to happen. I, mean, I believe in that. Yeah. And uh, here you can see Brian. He posted this photo um, yesterday. And hell yeah, he's looking impressive. His legs look like he's open class bodybuilder. But I don't really like this pose too much. Side triceps is not mandatory pose in classic physique, but you can do it in your free posing routine if it looks good. For example, Arash Ragbar has an amazing side tricep pose, and that is something I commend because not everybody can uh, do side tricep properly because it really does require your physique to be very aesthetic. It requires broad shoulders, narrow waist, and the ability to actually twist properly so you can show everything. And Brian is not super efficient in doing that. I don't think his chest is shaped at the way it should be for this pose, but it's good. It's looking good. And 
it's very it's very likely that he can win again but i have another favorite and yeah that's this canadian face right here chris bumstead my favorite classic physique guy he's my age maybe like half a year older than me and he's already living my dream so i hate him because of that i want to be on that stage too and uh, i'm gonna be there i'm gonna be there one day so you guys just keep following me and uh, let's see how far can this train go but i believe i will step on that stage with chris bumstead one day but this year it's not gonna happen and chris bumstead is gonna become mr olympia classic physique this year i'm really really looking forward to that and i believe that's gonna happen what do you guys think do you think he has a chance and for the end of this video this is the newest ronnie coleman physique update as you can see he gained some muscle back his chest is looking very vascular fuller than before the same thing goes with his arms and with his uh, stomach yeah his waist is looking fuller as well but i guess that's just what happens with old age and uh, i also want to talk about why the hell is he promoting these kind of uh, fat loss creams i mean that's what he's doing and he's saying in the comment section go guys buy this stuff if you believe my integrity i mean he's losing it actually he's losing his integrity by doing this he's the king he's the greatest of all time please don't get me wrong i'm not hating on ronnie as far as bodybuilding goes he is the god he's the god of bodybuilding there are guys who are called godfathers of bodybuilding ronnie coleman is the god of bodybuilding he is the king the ultimate bodybuilder but i don't get it why would he sell fat loss creams put some cream on your stomach and you will lose weight does anybody here really believe that can work I mean, we all know that diet is what burns fat. <laughs> no cream will make you lose fat unless you diet. If you eat like crap, you will get fat and you will not lose weight. And Ronnie knows that. Ronnie knows that for sure. He is the best. The best ever. So why the hell is he selling these creams? Why is he putting his name on the line like that? I guess nobody will say anything bad about him because he's the king. But I guess I will be the one. I will be the one to say it. He shouldn't be doing this because nobody really believes that this is how you can lose fat. If I'm wrong, tell me down below in the comment section. Tell me how does that work, <laughs> because I don't get it. Anyways, guys, this is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please tell me in the comment section below what did you like and tell me what you agree or you disagree with me, because I'm sure you will disagree with many things, but I am looking forward. I'm looking forward to answering to all of your comments, as I always do. And guys, if you want to see more content like this, more bodybuilding content, uploading every single day, very often multiple times in a day, subscribe, subscribe, please don't miss out on those videos and also like the video once again all the best guys bye bye